Hi, everyone. Welcome. We're going to give it another minute here. Hi, everybody. Um, thanks for joining us. We're going to just give a little bit more time to let everybody in, and then we'll get going. Okay, it looks like our numbers have slowed down. So I guess we'll just get going. Um, thanks so much for joining us. You are here with us to learn about the Eberly College of Science um, at the University Park campus. I'm Megan Holmes. I'm the future student coordinator, and I am joined by some students and colleagues. Um, I'm going to introduce you to Dr. Beth Johnson. She's the director of our science programs here at Penn State. But before I turn it over to her, I want to tell you a few things. Um, this is a webinar. We cannot see you or hear you. And we are recording this. So um, if you have questions for us, please use the Q&A box. We are not going to be monitoring the chat, although we might give you a few little um, links that will be useful to you in the chat. But I'm not going to be looking for your questions there. Please use the Q&A box. Please feel free to ask us questions during the presentation, because we don't know if we'll have time at the end before you need to go to the admission session. So with that, I'm going to turn it over to my colleague, um, Beth Johnson, and um, here we go. Great, thanks, Megan. Thank you all for joining today. Um, I'd like to share a little bit about myself um, and my background so that you know who's speaking to you today. Um, so I uh, went to school, I earned my bachelor's degree in biology from a small liberal arts college called Muhlenberg College in Allentown, Pennsylvania. Um, and there I was pretty heavily involved in a lot of different things. Um, I did undergraduate research, I studied abroad, um, and I also was a work study student, so I had to work my way through college. Um, after I graduated, I decided to come to Penn State where I earned my PhD in entomology from the College of Agricultural Sciences. And I did my doctoral research on uh, plant insect interactions and chemical ecology. And then following my uh, graduate work, I then joined the faculty at Juniata College, which is a small liberal arts school in Huntington, Pennsylvania, where I was an assistant professor and taught a variety of different life science courses, um, lecture style as well as laboratory style. Um, and then my career brought me back to Penn State, which I was thrilled, um, where I became a member of the Eberly College of Science. Um, and so today in my current role, I'm, the, I'm an associate teaching professor um, and I'm the program head of the science major, which I'm very excited to tell you about later today in our session. Um, in my current role, I oversee the science major curriculum. I'm also an academic advisor, a Schreier honors advisor, and I co-lead um, an integrative program called BSMBA, which I will mention as well. So to um, share a little bit about what we're going to talk about today, we're going to uh, introduce you to the uh, numerous different majors that the Eberly College of Science has to offer. We're also going to talk about the support network that you'll gain when you become a member of Eberly. We're also going to talk a little bit about the student experience, and we have some student guests today to share their particular experience with you. And then we'll finish off with next steps um, to help you with your decision. So um, I felt like it was important to share with you the, the variety of different majors that the Everly College of Science has to offer. So for all of the students out there, I would encourage you to pause for a minute and think about what do you want to study? What type of science do you like? Um, and so eventually you'll choose a major. 
Um, I know some students out there today might know exactly what they want to study, whereas some of the rest of you might be interested in a couple different areas or you're not quite sure yet, you want to take some classes and help you figure it out, and that's totally okay. Um, if we think about the different disciplinary areas of science, the majors in the Everly College of Science can be divided into these four different categories. We've got life science majors, physical science majors, quantitative science majors, and then we have a couple majors that, are, that we call interdisciplinary because they really span um, all three of these different areas. Um, and so one thing that I think makes Everly College of Science uh, pretty interesting, a little bit unique, um, is that some of the majors that we offer um, have multiple options that you can choose from. So an, an option is a technical term at Penn State, um, but you can kind of think about it like a track within a major. And so I'm going to step through each of these majors to give you a better sense of what that means. So if we start with some life science majors, um, for example, the biochemistry and molecular biology major, students would choose to pursue either the biochemistry option or the molecular and cell bio option. And so this allows you to really tailor your, um, your training, your academic training, your experiences, the type of courses that you're taking um, to become a genuine specialist in one of these areas. And um, having come from a small liberal arts college myself with just a generic biology major, I kind of wish my school had offered some of these specialty options um, for me to, to tailor my degree towards the type of science I was interested in. Um, and so speaking of my major biology, um, here at Penn State, Everly College of Science offers six different biology options. So you can study general biology or ecology, genetics and developmental bio, neuroscience, plant bio, and vertebrate physiology. Um, so you would choose one of those options. The, for the biotechnology bachelor's degree, um, students would choose either the clinical lab science option um, for the students who want to pursue a clinical lab science career path, um, or if you're just generally interested in biotech, you would choose the general option. Um, one thing that's really unique about the general biotech option is when you are partway through your degree program, you can decide if you would like to add on a master's degree in biotechnology. And if you decide that that's a good fit for you, you can actually apply for um, admission to an integrated undergraduate graduate degree program where you would earn both your Bachelor of Science and your Master of Science in Biotech from Penn State. Um, so that's an option that you can think about if you'd like to um, pursue here. And then um, the last major under sort of the life science category is the microbiology major, which there are no options to choose from. All students would just be in um, microbiology major. Within the physical science majors, um, we've got the astronomy and astrophysics major. Students would choose either the graduate study option or the computer science option. We also offer the planetary science and astronomy major. And um, a common question that we get is, well, what's the difference between planetary science and the astronomy major? And um, this is something that students interested in exploring these two different areas would work closely with the astronomy faculty advisor to help you decide the right path for you. Um, often students who are interested in graduate school would pursue the astronomy and astrophysics major, um, one of the options, graduate study or computer science. Um, and then students who are interested in working in like science education, working at a planetarium, um, often those students would pursue the planetary science and astronomy major. Um, Everly College of Science also offers a chemistry bachelor's degree, uh, no options for that one. And we also offer the, um, a physics degree where you would choose from one of the five options, computation physics, electronics, general physics, medical physics, or um, nanotechnology and material science. Within the quantitative science majors, um, the Everly College of Science is one of the colleges that offers the data sciences degree. Um, and so for those of you out there who are not really sure what data science is, um, data science is when people are looking at large scale data sets and they're trying to make um, 
sort of make inferences about either behavior or, um, you know, looking at the data to determine if there are general trends to help make strategic decisions. Um, and so if you wanted to pursue data science within the Eberly College of Science, you would need to choose the statistical modeling data science option. Um, this degree also is offered by other colleges here at University Park campus. Um, and so if you wanted to pursue the applied data science option, you would actually need to look at the College of Information Science and Technology. Um, or if you wanted to do the computational data science option, you would need to look at the College of Engineering. Um, so it's, it's really the third option on this list here is the one that you would be housed within the Everly College of Science. Um, regarding mathematics, Everly offers two different mathematics degrees. Students can choose to earn either a Bachelor of Science degree in math, where you would choose one of these six options, um, or students could choose to earn a Bachelor of Arts degree in math. And so you would work with your math advisor to choose the best degree um, to fit your career goals. And then finally, the last major under the quantitative science area is um, the statistics major. And so here students would select from one of these five different options. We've got actuarial statistics, applied statistics, biostatistics, graduate study, and then the statistics and computing option. And then finally, to bring us home, um, we've got uh, several different interdisciplinary science majors. So um, one such major is our forensic science uh, major, where students would select from either the forensic micro, uh, sorry, forensic molecular biology option, or you would pursue the forensic chemistry option. Um, another interesting major that our college offers is the pre-medicine major. Um, and pre-medicine major is often, uh, you know, it's not necessarily offered by other schools that are out there. So a lot of students are interested in the pre-medicine major. Um, I'm going to, in the next slide, I'm going to compare and contrast the um, pre-medicine major degree versus being on a pre-health career track. Um, because it's important to know that you can still pursue a health professions career um, by pursuing any major, but one such major that some students think is a good fit for them is the pre-medicine major. Um, and then the last major under the interdisciplinary science category is the science major. And this is, this is the role that I play in the college. I'm the undergraduate program head for this major. Um, so the science major is really a um, it's an integrative program um, where students get a broad foundation across biology courses, chemistry, math, physics, and statistics, and then you customize the upper level courses to fit your interests. Um, and so students in the science major select from one of the three options, the general option, the biological science and health professions option, or the legal studies, government service, public policy option. Um, and then any of these options can prepare you for a variety of different diverse career paths. So we have students in the science major that go on for careers in agriculture, in biotechnology, chemistry, education, government, um, medicine, pharma, R&D, um, all different areas. Um, one thing I'll give you a sneak peek is we are in the process of changing the name of the science major to integrative science to better capture this interdisciplinary nature of the coursework that you'd be taking. Um, so that's still in process, but um, we're excited for that change. Um, another interesting um, opportunity that students who are interested, who might be interested in for the science major is um, we have an, uh, an agreement with the Smeal College of Business to offer an integrative undergraduate graduate degree program where students are combining their science interests with their business interests. Um, and so students that are interested in, we call it the Science BSMBA program. Um, and so you would earn your undergraduate degree in science, um, but it's a slightly different curriculum than the other three options um, because the Science BSMBA curriculum also includes coursework like accounting, um, economics, and uh, um, data science course as well. Um, and then students after the completion of their undergraduate degree would go on and complete their MBA degree from the Smeal College of Business here at University Park campus. Um, so for anyone who's interested in this program, um, an important thing to know is that it is a direct admit only program. So you need to submit an online application 
um, and go through an interview process to be in the BSMBA program. Um, and that's different than the rest of the options for the science major where anyone can pursue those. So um, I'll speak for a minute about the difference between pre-medicine and pre-health at Penn State. I kind of alluded to this in the last slide. Um, so pre-medicine really is a major at Penn State. You're actually earning your Bachelor of Science degree in the major of pre-medicine, um, and you have to take specific courses to fulfill degree requirements. Um, this major was um, designed to uh, fulfill all of the prerequisite courses that students need to take um, in their preparation for medical school, dental school, optometry school, and podiatry school. Um, so all of the prereqs are built right into that degree. Um, and students in this major still work with a pre-health advisor to best prepare yourself um, as a candidate for whatever health profession area you're interested in. So I'd like to contrast the pre-med major with pre-health as a career path. Um, so we have tons of pre-health students at Penn State. Um, and so many of them are completing de a degree in, an, in a different area, not, the, not necessarily the pre-medicine major. And so really you can still be on the pre-health career path and pursue a, a degree in anything that you wanna study. We've got students studying science degrees, um, science major, <laughs> biology major, uh, BMB major. Um, it, it could even be physics, medical physics, for example. Um, but we also have plenty of students that are on the pre-health career track that are pursuing a nutrition degree or a biobehavioral health degree or an English degree. Um, I had a, one of my former advisees was a, a music major. She was a bassoonist and still went on to medical school. Um, and so in this case, you can pursue any major that you want and you would work with your pre-health advisor to make sure that you take the right courses um, that are prerequisites for admission into either medical school, dental school, optometry, whatever it is that your health profession career of interest is. Um, and of course, you would also work with your pre-health advisor to prepare your candidacy for, um, for that professional school program. So in general, both paths can um, really strongly prepare you for whatever health profession area you would like to pursue, whether it's medicine, dentistry, pharmacy, physician assistant programs, optom, podiatry. Um, but really, the, the question comes down to you, the individual student, um, is pre-medicine as a major a good fit for you, or would you like to pursue any major and be on the pre-health career path? So we're going to jump to our next section now, um, and we're going to talk a little bit about how you're going to continue the success that you started in high school, right? You're all, you were all admitted to Penn State University, so congratulations. You're admitted to the Everly College of Science, and you have a difficult decision to make now. Um, you're choosing between Everly and other schools. And so what are you going to get from Everly that's going to help you be successful moving forward? Um, you, by coming to Penn State and Everly specifically, you're going to get an incredibly strong support network. Um, so this support network is diverse in breadth and scope. It's going to obviously include your faculty instructors of the courses that you're taking. Um, it's also going to include learning assistance and teaching assistance. Um, a lot of Penn State courses heavily utilize undergraduate students like yourself who've already taken the courses before um, and have mastered that material. And so LAs and TAs actually help other um, students learn the material. So you can learn, learn alongside your peers. You can also get support, uh, learning, support learning support through Penn State Learning, which is um, essentially free tutoring on campus. Pretty cool. You also will have a lot of support from your first year seminar course. So these are courses you take in your first semester. Um, they're small, so it's about, I think, 25 students maximum, um, and it's in the Everly College of Science, we, um, we group students in first-year seminar courses based on their intended major of interest, and so you'll be with other students who are interested in pursuing the statistics major or the chemistry major um, or whatever it is that you're interested in, and so you can learn about um, how to be a successful Penn State student, but also be starting to learn about preparing for your future career. Um, you will also be paired with an academic advisor who will help you um, not only select classes, but understand how to make degree progress. 
Um, your advisor will also help just be a sounding board if you run into any issues or if you're not sure of where to go for a certain type of help, your advisor is somebody that you can lean on to for support. And then um, you also have access to a wide variety of different university level and college level offices that provide all kinds of support for students. Um, and so if we look at a few of those offices, the first office is the Eberly College of Science Office of Diversity and Inclusion. Um, Samia Cooprider is the director of this office and she is actually, I think, here with us today. Um, yeah. And can say a few things about your office. Thanks, Samia. Sure, thanks, Dr. Johnson. Hi, everyone. Good evening, my name is Samia Cooprider. Like Dr. Johnson mentioned, I'm the director of the Office of Diversity and Inclusion. So our office is really here to support all students. And that really starts from the moment that you step on campus, from the first day you arrive, to your moving into your residence hall. Um, our college, the Eberly College of Science, puts on a large welcome day event. Um, and we table outside with a variety of other organizations and uh, departments as well. So we really are passionate about helping you find your community right away as you come onto campus. And that starts with being involved in student orgs, any uh, committees, et cetera. Along with that, we really want to make sure that um, students are able to be successful, and a lot of times that starts with finances. So our, does, our office does offer scholarships for students who are currently enrolled in the Eberly College of Science. So those scholarships are external scholarships, like some NASA ones, for example. We have a list we provide to students, depending on their major. We'll have conversations, but those scholarships are really to help students Think about the opportunities that are available outside of Penn State that you can apply to and really connect you to a variety of other resources that you may need during that time. Overall, we're really here to support you one-on-one, -on -one, get you connected with a mentor if that's of interest, whether that be a student, undergrad, or a graduate student, um, or even a faculty member. We do understand students face hurdles, and we want to be here to talk through what possible solutions there are. We are here to empower and advocate for you, and we just ask that you take that first step and make it an opportunity to connect with us and other offices that we will mention in the presentation. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to reach out. My contact information is at the bottom and best of luck in your journey. Thanks, Samia. Okay, so um, next up I'll introduce the Office of Science Engagement. Um, Tiffany Matthews is the director of this office. Um, she couldn't be with us tonight, so I'm gonna share a little bit about this office with you. Um, her office is really um, involved in helping students develop all these different extracurricular activities. Um, and so this might fall under the scope of undergraduate research. Um, we have lots of students, as you can imagine, coming to Penn State who are interested in um, getting their hands wet with, with research at the college level. Um, and so the Office of Science Engagement can help you figure out how to, how to approach faculty to join a lab. Um, they can work with you to figure out, um, you know, are you gonna try to pursue research during the academic year or maybe pursue a summer experience? Um, they can help you navigate possibly getting academic credit for your work or even getting paid for your work. Um, and so they're a huge uh, resource in that area. The Office of Science Engagement also has um, a career development person who counselor, so to say, who will be your, um, your coach and your mentor to help you develop professionally, seek out opportunities on campus to learn. Um, this person also can review your resume and give you support for, in preparation for an interview. Um, their office also can assist students who are interested in pursuing an internship or a co-op as a work experience in preparation leading for your career. Um, and so the, the company logos here listed are a smattering of the different companies where we've had Eberly College of Science students work recently. Um, and so it's very exciting when students actually take their, the knowledge that they're gaining in the classroom and they're able to practice it and apply it um, out in the real world and get that real world experience that's going to be able to be leveraged um, when they're on the job market. And then finally, the Office of Science Engagement can help students who are interested in working in an education abroad experience during their time. I mentioned earlier today um, that I myself studied abroad in college. I went to Australia. It was a life-changing um, experience. I spent a whole semester there. I was in a program where we, um, we studied uh, Aboriginal culture, but also tropical ecology and the Great Barrier Reef. And as a biologist, it was I was just in heaven. It was amazing. Um, and so many of our science students here at Eberly 
also are interested in pursuing an abroad experience. Um, some students uh, find that for them, for their individual path, they would like to go abroad for an entire semester and they can work um, with our abroad coordinator to plan for that experience um, alongside getting help from their academic advisor to make sure they're, um, they're planning, uh, planning ahead there. But some students who may not be able to work in a whole semester abroad or are more interested in a shorter term experience might look to take a Penn State course that's here at University Park campus, but has a has a has um, an excursion component part of it. So as an example, in the spring semester, um, I know of one course that, that we offer. Uh, it's, a, it's an anatomy course where students take it here at University Park, but then they learn abroad in Italy during spring break. So they have sort of a short trip component as part of that course. Um, and so there are not more than 90 science related education abroad programs that you can choose from if you really want to take science courses abroad. Um, if you are interested in taking more like gen ed courses abroad, um, we've got more than 400 for you to choose from. Um, and so as long as you're planning early, um, working with our ed abroad assistant, working with your academic advisor, um, you can plan ahead for that. And um, some of you may be interested in kind of combining some of these. And so I know our Ed Abroad Advisor also helps students who might be interested in getting either research experience abroad or like internship work experience abroad. And so the Office of Science Engagement can help you with any of these areas. Um, another sort of university level uh, resource that you have access to that's actually housed within the Everly College of Science is the Penn State Pre-Health Advising um, Office. And uh, the office is headed by Melissa Krejcovic. Um, she's the Director of Pre-Health Advising at Penn State. And she and her team work with students at any Penn State campus in any Penn State major who are working toward a, prof a health professions career. And so this might be students pursuing optometry school, dental school, um, maybe you want to go and get your master's in public health, uh, obviously medical school, pharmacy school, physician assistant, podiatry, um, and so on, even allied health pro um, professional programs as well. And so um, Dr. K and her team offer group advising sessions. So this would include workshops, presentations. They even also have a podcast. And so you can check that out now already. Um, I actually listen to it on Spotify. It's pretty cool. Um, so you can take a look, take a listen. Um, the pre-health advising team offers one-on-one -on -one advising appointments with students to help you reflect on your own candidacy in preparation for whatever it is your health profession career path of choice is. And then um, perhaps one of the best areas of support is during the year in which you are applying to your health profession program, the pre-health advising team offers a lot of support during that year. So they'll take a look at your application and give you suggestions. They can help you um, practice a mock interview. Um, they can help answer your questions on, well, what happens first after you submit your primary application? What comes next? Um, and they can actually advocate on behalf of you. They've got, um, they make sure that they develop relationships. Uh, many, of the er many of the different um, health professional schools, particularly located in the state of Pennsylvania, but also sort of the right around region here in Northeastern United States um, to help students get into their, their uh, pr program of their dreams. Okay, so um, we're gonna pivot again to our next area. And we're gonna talk a little bit now about the Everly College of Science student experience. So what are you gonna be doing when you're here um, in Everly? And we know from years and years of working with students that we see our students um, thrive when they are engaging in a lot of different co-curricular experiences. This is gonna help round out not only the the things that you're learning in the classroom, but you're going to learn so much from these co-curricular experiences that's going to help prepare you for the real world. And so a couple examples of co-curricular experiences that many of our students pursue include um, becoming one of those teaching or learning assistants for the courses that you're taking, um, seeking out various leadership opportunities as they come up, um, trying your hand at undergraduate research or pursuing a study abroad experience, um, doing an internship or a co-op work experience, 
Um, we also have lots of student clubs and organizations that students pursue, um, or maybe you decide to live in one of our learning communities. So for the last two bullet points, I'll share a little bit more information. Um, regarding student organizations, as you can imagine, Penn State uh, University Park Campus has a lot of students, so we have a lot of organizations. Um, in fact, I think the last time I've looked is definitely reached the 1000 mark. So um, we've got more than 1000 university wide student organizations. And then um, here at the College of Science, we have more than 40 that are that are science focused. Um, and you can actually use this website listed here to find an organization that, that um, is a good fit for your interests. So you can type in a keyword and see if we have a chess club. We do. Uh, I think there's ultimate Frisbee. I, I've definitely seen like the Quidditch team <laughs> practice Quidditch. Um, so there's almost any kind of organization that you can think about. Um, the logos represented here are some of the different student organizations that many of our College of Science students are in. Um, and so this ranges from everything to um, Eberly College of Science Student Council to OSTEM, which is out in STEM. Um, it ranges from Science Lion Pride, which our two student speakers will speak a little bit about. We've also got some pre-health organizations. We've got um, Nobuche, the National Organization for Black Chemists and Chemical Engineers. Um, we've got Penn State Black Caucus. These are just a smattering of examples of different student orgs that a lot of our Everly College of Science students find really impactful. Um, next, just to briefly share, um, another way that you can get involved right from your first year is to join a one of our living learning communities. Um, so here in the Everly College of Science, we have a lot of students that are interested in joining one of these four different areas. So the biome is for first year biology students. Um, FICE is for first year in science and engineering students. The FSI is for the Forensic Science Interest House and WISE is for Women in Science Engineering. And so, as you can imagine from the title, Living Learning Communities, this is gonna be a student housing sort of group of people in these different interest areas um, where you can get to know people um, and build community that way. And now I am going to introduce our first student speaker of the evening, um, Yuki. So Yuki, thanks for joining us. Um, whenever you're ready, take it away. All right. Hi, everyone. My name is Yuki. I am a third year uh, student majoring in biochemistry and molecular biology. So I'm the biochemistry option. So like Beth mentioned earlier, it's more grounded in physical sciences. So I take a lot of um, like uh, thermodynamics classes and quantum chemistry classes compared to other students in the molecular biology option who would um, instead take like cellular biology or immunology. So you have the first um, three or four semesters to decide which option um, you're more interested in. And I just uh, choose the biochemistry option. So at Penn State, I am very heavily involved in research. So currently I am an undergraduate researcher in the Booker Lab doing enzymology work. So that's looking at um, different enzymes and their functions and how they behave in cells. And I also used to do another undergraduate research position in the Yang Lab, which um, concluded. And I also am a learning assistant for Chem 110 and Chem 110 Honors, which is the first year general um, chemistry classes. And in the future, I plan to pursue the MD PhD. So um, for uh, people who are not aware of what an MD PhD is, it's one program that allows you to get both degrees. So instead of going to med school and a PhD, uh, program separately to get both uh, degrees, you just go to one program and get both degrees when you finish. So at Penn State, I've had several unique experiences. So um, I'm in the Millennium Scholars Program and Schreyer Honors College. So the application for, I think, both programs have closed now. But for Schreyer, you can transfer into the college um, after you uh, accept your offer to Penn State. So what you can do is you can apply to Shriner Honors College during your second and maybe third year um, to go, get into the college to get benefits, for example, scheduling early um, or scheduling classes early on or taking honors classes. And when you're in the Shriner Honors College, they really promote undergraduate research in science. So you're 
um, required to write a thesis um, summarizing all the work that you've done in your undergrad. So um, at Penn State, as I mentioned earlier, I do a lot of um, research. So I've applied to research grants at Penn State and on the national level. So the Goldwater Scholarship, it's a national level um, scholarship that students can apply for. It's like $75,000 a year um, to fund school expenses and research expenses. And also the Erickson Discovery Grant is um, a, a, an internal grant it, within Penn State that gives you, uh, I think, $30,500 to do summer research at Penn State. So that's why um, the summer I stayed behind at Penn State in my lab working on um, my thesis project. So I have a little picture um, on the left of like a paper. So that's like a grant application that I wrote. So I would say a lot of uh, Penn State students get experiences writing grant applications and research statements early on. And I would say that's been a very valuable experience for me because when you go on to, for example, grad school programs or MD PhD programs, you're required to write um, a research statement that is similar to the grants I wrote. So I got experience early on. So um, I can kind of prepare for um, the applications um, to go to my future career path. And there's also way more um, scholarships that um, than what I mentioned on here. So I think there was a question about like scholarships at Penn State. And if you go um, to the Ever Everly College of Science scholarships, there's like um, like four or five different ones, um, each uh, for different uh, types of students with different career paths. So I would encourage you to check that out. And also at Penn State, um, like Beth was saying, they really promote you to study abroad when you can. So I took um, a May master class called SP497. So a May master is basically after the spring semester, there's a really short semester in May um, for like three or four weeks. And students can take classes then and they're usually um, a lot abroad. So what I did was I went to Switzerland um, and I collaborated with uh, universe, uh, University of Zurich students to kind of create sustainability issue solutions for the university. And um, it's kind of like brainstorming what we can do to make the institution more sustainable and eco-friendly. And in addition to working for that class, we were able to visit so many places in Switzerland. So I have like the picture of the Swiss Alps. Um, so I would say it was an incredible experience because I don't think I would have been to Switzerland if um, I didn't take this class. So it's a really great way for students to kind of expand their perspective um, about the world and like different issues going on and also different opportunities uh, globally. So I'm gonna go a little bit more into the research um, and what I do at Penn State for people who are interested in pursuing research. So I think a lot of people who want to go into uh, med school and grad school, they would end up doing research at some point at Penn State. So the main lab that I work in is in the Booker Lab in the Department of Chemistry. So right now I'm trying to discover drugs to prevent resistance in MRSA. So MRSA is like the really virulent strain of bacteria that's uh, resistant to a lot of antibiotics. So we're trying to develop a preventative method for that. Um, I also did research in the biomedical uh, engineering uh, department, and that was more for writing a review paper. So what a review paper is, is basically it's like a really um, long, um, I guess, summary of different papers. So you kind of pull different information from different papers and compile it into, an, uh, into one paper. So uh, readers can kind of better understand the concept without reading like 200 papers. So you read the paper on their behalf so they don't have to. So I published that paper and it's like the paper that I put um, at the top of the page. And also at Penn State and um, outside of Penn State, a lot of institutions have summer research uh, experiences. So during the summer of my freshman year, I went to the Howard Hughes Medical Institute and there I used the electron microscope to kind of image the cell surface, which is the other image I have on top. So that's an, uh, that's an image that I was able to take over the summer. So I think what's really nice about these research experiences is that they give you access to cutting edge research that Penn State faculty do. 
So they don't treat you as like a student in class. They treat you more like a colleague. And a lot of students also drive their own projects. So I know a lot of students with their own projects, they're writing papers or they've already published. So I think um, being at Penn State and in a very research heavy environment um, was really helpful for me um, in developing my research career. And I also wanted to emphasize that like um, you can see here, I did research in biomedical engineering and in the department of chemistry, which I don't like belong in. So I'm a biochemistry major, but uh, like I have on here, you can do research in basically um, any discipline. And one thing you um, just have to consider is for the thesis, you want someone in your department, but there's ways to kind of work with faculty outside of your department. So if you have like a reason that you're doing research outside of your department, you can just write a few um, lines of like why you're doing that. And if you're able to justify it, they um, accept your thesis. So it's really, um, you have a lot of labs and topics to choose from, which I think is really exciting. So for a biochemistry major, I took 19 credits this semester. So that's um, on the higher side. So I took um, research for credit. So a lot of students take research for credit. So what you do is you basically commit a certain um, portion of your schedule to just going into lab and doing research. So I go into lab or for example, outside of lab, I write my thesis. So I'm uh, trying to write my thesis and I'm kind of compiling it for graduation. And then usually um, I go to class so I have a picture on there that's from my thermodynamics class. I don't know if you can see the picture, but it's like of like math equations. And then after class, I usually get dinner with friends. And then um, a few times a week we have club meetings. So this picture, it's not a club meeting, um, it's from Thon. So it's like um, one of the most famous events at Penn State, um, the dance marathon for uh, benefiting children with um, cancer. So that's like an event that our club, Science Lion Pride, works for. So if you're interested in fun, you might want to come to Penn State. And after nine, I don't have um, any classes. So I just do homework and like write my thesis and kind of finish out the day. And at Penn State, other than taking classes and research, I'm involved in Science Lion Pride and also on um, Phi Kappa Phi, that's an honor society. And I also do a Taekwondo in my free time. So if anyone has questions about what I mentioned, like my schedule or research, just feel free to put it in the Q&A and I can answer it. Great, thanks Yuki. Um, now we have Michelle, our second guest student for the evening. Thank you. Hello, everyone. Uh, I'm Michelle. I'm also a third year. I'm doing the math major with graduate study option and a biology major. I'm also a research assistant at the BD lab at Penn State. So one thing I wanted to talk about more in depth is uh, one unique experience I've had at Penn State, which is the study abroad. So my last spring semester, I studied abroad in Italy with the ISI Florence program at Palazzo Rucciolai. This was a biology program in Italy. So I took like a uh, required biology, chemistry and Italian class. But then I also had the chance to take an elective, which I ended up taking photography and I put some of my pictures there. So you can see like in the middle there with the water was a picture I took in Venice. On the bottom right is a picture I took in Milan, and top right is a picture of the Duomo at Florence. And then on the left is a picture with Yuki that we took in Zurich when I went to visit them. So, yeah, I, oh, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> sorry. I fully recommend doing any kind of study abroad program at Penn State if you can, because they have so much so many opportunities to do it and there's any major has kind of a option for the study abroad so if you have a um if you're capable of doing it with your major and you have enough credits to graduate on time and 
your advisor is saying everything is okay. I think it's a great opportunity that allows for a lot of diverse kind of experiences that you can't get at the Penn State campus by itself. So for me, it was a very eye-opening experience. And I was able to, as you can see, go to many Italian cities and kind of, in a way, explore the world, which I very much enjoyed. So here is a picture that I took of my schedule this semester. So this is what it looked like studying. You can see that in the middle, I mean, most of my classes ended up being 10 to 3 p.m. So it was very middle of the day centric. Uh, we have, I had like kind of random sporadic openings for lunch breaks. So that's pretty normal if you're taking more classes. So you kind of have to struggle with when to take a, a lunch break. Um, so here, because of my schedule, I decided to schedule my research hours more early in the day than I would usually because I just couldn't do it in the middle of the day. So I would have like meetings and work on research, maybe eight to 10 a.m. And then after classes ended, I would study for classes till like 8 p.m., which is when club meetings usually happened, like Science Line Pride, which we have 8, 8 p.m. on Thursdays. Um, I would also spend most of my more time on the weekend doing research because during the week I was more focused on classes. And another thing I wanted to mention was this was a more heavy uh, schedule for me. So I took more classes and spent more time focusing on my course courses this semester than I would usually do in another semester. So next semester I was planning on changing my course load and having less courses to take, which is something that a lot of students do because it's you can really have very flexible schedules. So next semester I'm planning to focus less on courses and maybe more on research, which is something you balance at Penn State. So, yeah. Thanks, Michelle. Before I let you go, could you take a minute to describe the Science Line Pride student organization, organization since both you and Yuki are in it? Would you, would you mind? Yeah, sure. So Science Line Pride is the um, kind of ambassadors for the Everly College of Science. We uh, do a lot of outreach, like we organize tours for incoming students, we uh, organize events for alumni, anything that's involved with the Everly College of Science, Science Lion Pride can have involvement in. So yeah, it's a great club if you want to uh, be more involved in the Everly College of Science and uh, just the administration as well. And and also a big part of it is THON. Science Line Pride goes to THON every year. And we have like uh, THON children that we work with to, yeah, just <laughs> a big uh, part of THON, so. That's awesome. Thank you so much. All right, so we're nearing the end of our time together, um, but I wanted to take a few minutes to talk about, um, you know, when you're here at Penn State, you're taking your classes, you're learning all these technical skills, you're having all these amazing experiences like our, our student speakers today mentioned. Um, and so ultimately our goal for you when you leave the Penn State um, University Everly College of Science with your degree, when you graduate, you will be entering the workforce and you'll be in high demand because you will have developed all of these different um, professional skills um, because of all the experiences that you've had here. And so speaking of careers, um, I know a lot of people wonder where do you know, your graduates go when they leave Everly? Um, and so 50% of our students choose to enter graduate school, professional school, and then half of them also enter the workforce. Um, so for the grad and professional school, obviously, as you can imagine, we've got a big draw um, into our college for students that are interested in health-related careers. Um, as we've talked about earlier today, that includes medical school, dental school, physician assistant, sometimes master of public health um, degree, um, or some of our other students are interested in professional school. So maybe they're going to earn their master's degree 
um, in a certain disciplinary area or go on to earn their doctoral degree. Maybe they're going to go on to law school or earn their, their MBA business degree. Um, so a lot of our students are looking at sort of additional schooling, but not all. Um, the other half of our students are looking to um, get into the workforce. So this might be in um, different government agencies uh, or different um, different branches um, like Peace Corps, uh, Teach for America. This could also mean going right into industry. Um, so for particularly our students that are developing a lot of research oriented skills, lab skills, technical skills, they might be looking into um, working at pharmaceutical companies, biotech companies, possibly going and doing data analytics, data science for companies and so forth. So um, we're just about at the end here. Um, I wanted to take a minute to remind you what the next step is um, once you decide that Everly is the place for you. So take some time, probably um, still waiting on some applications to be um, processed, get some additional, um, you know, hear from additional schools about trying to think about what your next steps are. But if you decide that Penn State Everly College of Science is right for you, um, one thing that you'll absolutely want to do is take a look at our various scholarships that we award. Um, you should have received some mailings about this. Check your email. Um, January 29th is the hard deadline for Everly College of Science scholarship applications. So take a look on our website, um, see if there are any that you would like to apply for and submit your application by the deadline because um, we'd love to consider you. And then May 1st is the deadline for you to accept your admissions offer to come to Penn State. Um, so we'd love to have you. And with that, um, I will share our contact information on the slide here. Feel free to take a picture if you'd like to send us an email with additional questions. Um, I'm gonna pause here for a moment and ask Megan, because I've not been monitoring the Q&A, to see if Megan has any additional questions that she recommends we answer live. I know you've been keeping up with it for me, so thank you. Beth, we do have one question, um, and I believe the question might go to Yuki. It is, thank you for the guidance. Please advise how the Shriers Honors College curriculum is integrated within Eberly majors. So not sure if Yuki wants to take that. Yeah, so I I would say the Schreyer Honors College curriculum is very integrated because the Schreyer Honors College curriculum isn't a separate curriculum. It's just an honors version of the classes you need to take as a biochemistry major, for example, or any major in the Berlin College of Science. So a lot of um, classes, they would have the regular section and the honors section. So for example, in biochemistry, it might be BMB like 401H, which I took the semester. And in math, there might be higher level classes, but I took math 230H. And they're, um, they don't add or subtract from your, your schedule. They just provide a better, like, um, like a more enhancing ex experience, I guess, because professors go beyond the um, course content in most cases. So they talk more about the applications of the content you learn in regular sections that you might not learn in like the actual regular section. So instead of learning about like, for example, um, a protein purification technique, you would talk about how you would apply it in a research setting, which I think is more useful when you want to um, do research um, in the future in grad school or in medical school. So I would say it's very integrated. Um, it's not hard to take an honors class because I, also noticed that a lot of professors, they're excited about teaching the course. So um, they really like to kind of like interact with students, find ways to make the class interesting instead of like a big lecture where professors are reading off PowerPoint slides, if that answers your question. Yeah, thanks, Yuki. That's a great way to answer it. I'll also add, um, I have a few Shire Honors um, advisees of my own in the science major, and um, of course some of them are taking Honors Biology or Honors Chemistry or Honors Math courses, so Honors Science courses. Um, but some of my students have also taken Honors courses outside of the Everly College of Science. So I have one student who um, takes Honors English courses because she's constant, uh, considering an English minor. Um, I have another student who took an Honors Anthropology course because again it um, aligned with his interests. 
And so I do think that is wonderful that Schreier students can, can choose to take honors courses in the sciences or in their particular major disciplinary area, um, or they can also take honors courses outside of the sciences, which can be a great way to meet other Schreier students. Um, Samia or Megan, are there any other questions since we have another minute? Beth, G or Yuki or Michelle, if anyone wants to take on the question around how big are the lectures, can you speak specifically around the major and then specifically when you get into your major and then the gen ed classes? Those are great questions. I'm going to pitch it to the students because you are the ones with boots on the ground here. Yeah, so it's definitely different for math majors and biochemistry majors because the number of students in both programs is just so different. So Biochemistry has a lot more students. So in the regular section, I think it ends up being um, like 120 to 150 students um, for a biochemistry class. So for example, BMB 400, which is a prerequisite for um, the major, I would say there were like 150 students and it was like a big lecture hall and the professor just stood in the front and, and kind of read the slides. I think it's a little bit different for the math major since there's um, fewer students. So even like the regular section of the class can look like an honors section in a BMB class. So I think Michelle can talk more about that. Yeah, so I had experienced both since I took biology courses and math courses in like the introductory biology courses. It was usually or bio biology or chemistry courses. It was usually around like 200 people in a big lecture hall, but even the introductory math classes were closer to 20 to 30 people in a class. And as you get higher and higher, that number just keeps going down. Like this semester, I took a 400 level math course that only had four people in the class. So that gets more and more common as for math because there's a lot less people in the major, but as you get higher in the major, class size goes down. Great. Thanks to you both. Um, I'm going to say that we're at time now. So um, thank you all for your questions. I hope we've answered them. If we haven't, please feel free to send Megan an email or myself an email. You'll hear from one of us. Um, I do want to advertise that the next session coming up in just two minutes, <laughs> we'll get started. Um, this is the admission, Penn State admission session. Um, so I think um, Megan might drop this Zoom link in the chat for you. Feel free to take a picture with your phone so you get all the numbers right. Um, but please join the Nittany Line Next Steps in Student panel for you to learn more about um, coming to Penn State. So thank you so much for your time tonight. Have a great, have a great day.